Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Kingdom Influencers Saved by Grace. I'm with my host Sylvia Puentes and y'all you do not want to miss this episode. This testimony is one of tears and triumph and ultimately God's unfailing love. You do not want to miss this story. Hi, and welcome to the Saved by Grace and the Kingdom Influencer Podcast. I'm your host, Sylvia Puentes. And I'm your co-host, Steve Hopper. And we've combined forces to bring you stories of hope, restoration, and God's faithful love. And to feature influencers who are using their platforms to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Please like, share, and subscribe. And welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. It is such a pleasure and privilege for me to introduce our guest today. Our guest is Tanya Chin, and Tanya is um, she's a friend of mine. We just graduated from Bible College together, Paris Bible College. Tanya is a leader. She's a speaker. She is a minister. And so, Tanya, welcome to Safe by Grace Kingdom Influencer. Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, Tanya, I had an opportunity to meet you uh, a little while back and hear your amazing, amazing testimony. And it's literally going to hit them to the core. But what the enemy meant to destroy with, um, God is using in a big way in your life, right? And so... Um, I'm just uh, I'm just so excited that you've decided to to come on the show with us today. Uh, take us back a little bit. Um, you know, obviously the situation uh, with your son was a defining moment in your life. Um, lead us up to that. What was life like prior to um, that moment when you got the news? Well, you know, my son, I, I want to say this, too, because I have to tell this story all the time. Uh, a lot of people just don't know how to deal with this type of heartbreak. But my son was in the street. He was um, like Instagram famous rapper type guy. And from my understanding, he lived like a thug life. You know, he uh, was uh, addicted to pills and um, in the streets really heavy, you know, selling drugs and different things like that. He was chasing the world. Um, he was raised in the church and he loved the Lord, but he loved that street life. You know, he, he loved living wild and free. So, you know, I used to keep him in my prayers and we had a really good relationship and I used to talk to him a lot. And so he really struggled with straddling the fifth. He struggled trying to be this person in the world, but then he also loved the Lord and loved God and knew everything that he was taught. And he kind of always wanted to revert back to that. So, you know, my son used to tell me like, man, I take these drugs so I can forget. He was like, I don't want to remember my life, all the mistakes that I've made. And I don't want to remember the good, how I chose to be in the world before I put, you know, chose to be with God. And so he was really struggling with it. Mm. Mm. So you, um, you, we see Tanya that like um, the enemy was condemning him, yeah. right? Was condemning yeah. him, and a lot of times, or I think pretty much every time, the enemy does that because he knows he he studies us and he knows the buttons to yeah. push that makes us vulnerable, that makes us you know that that causes us to fall. But um, often when when he condemns us, especially using our relationship with the Lord, uh, we shy away instead of getting closer, right? We tend yeah. to shy away because with the condemnation, he tries to shame and guilt us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He does. And one of the things, especially when you have a, when you, you're addicted to a, a, a substance, you he tricks you in thinking this is going to help me and this will make the pain go away and one of the things i told him was like listen every time you come off your high you're depressed it's because it's not real that's that's a lie of the enemy you're being deceived you're you're, you're serving a different god and that's just satisfying your flesh and it's never going to heal you you know what i mean it's, it's never going to heal you but you know he used to always say like ma I just i've gone so far i don't know how to come out of it 
And that's a part of my testimony before he was killed. So to get into it, my son got shot five times in uh, May of 2019. And um, prior to him uh, getting shot, I had had this two hour conversation with him like three weeks before. And we were ha we were having that conversation about, you know, I, I regret my life and I, I, I just wish I could just go back in time. And one of the things that I had to tell him was like, hey, you got to stop looking back. I said, you have to stop looking backwards and you have to start looking forward and you have to understand who you belong to. You know what I mean? This world is it, it's, it's going to consume and suck you in if you let it. And I told him that the drugs and that the little false healing and everything, I said, that's never going to fix your problem. You need to rededicate your life back to Christ and remember who your father is. Remember who you belong to. So I, I had this long talk with him and, and he was like, yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. You right. You right. I just I get so depressed and these drugs take it away. And every time I try to stop and I get it out my system, I start remembering my life. And it's like you gave me everything. And it's like now I'm, I'm in these streets and I it's like I'm doing things that I don't have to do. But it's too late because I've gone too far. I said, if you're in God and you are saved for real, I said, it's never too late. I said, it's, there, that's the trick. There's nothing that you can do to get you out of heaven if you are repenting, changing your mind, and moving forward with your life. But as long as you keep being stuck and, and you you're keep looking back, the enemy is going to keep, he's going he's gonna to have you. He's going to have his way with you. Mm -hmm. And I, that was like two weeks, three weeks before he got shot. And I do, I do remember telling him one thing, hey, I don't want to get that phone call. And I was like, God, because I got that phone call. Mm. And I, um, he was he was shot in a drive-by shooting. He was in front of a, a trap house. You know, I, I say this, and I want to tell everybody this. We pretend that we don't know what's going on. And so when our loved one passed, we'd be like, oh, they was just such a beautiful person, and they never did anything. Yes, that, yes, no. Let's be real. You reap what you sow. And there is repercussions and consequences to every action that doesn't line up with the word of God. And you can either, either reap the consequences of a good, abundant life, or you can reap the consequences of a life full of hell. Mm -hmm. And you're going to reap either way. You, you're sowing it, you're going, it's going to produce a harvest. And so I have to be honest, man, my son was living a hard, ruthless life. And he shortened his day. Yeah. God didn't kill my son. You was in the enemy camp and the enemy killed your tail. He, he took your life from you. He took whatever destiny God had created uh, for you. Mm. Whatever lies you were supposed to say, God had to bypass you and just pick somebody else because you shortened your days. And I have to understand that. Listen, I cried and cried. And that first year I was like, man, I hate this happened to you. But I'm so grounded in the Lord, I was like, hey, like, that's what happens. That's what happens when you don't follow the will of God for your life. Yeah. You had some uh, some peace of mind delivered to you from a young lady that was in your son's life, right? Right. Talk about that for a moment. Well, um, when I talk to my son. I guess so about two weeks later. So after my son memorial service, she walked up to my husband and was like, hey, listen, Mr. Damon, I have to tell you something is just is just blowing my mind because before um, my son was shot, uh, she said about two weeks ago, he was in the corner crying and praising God and listening to Kirk Franklin and singing and repenting. And, and she was like, I was like, uh, you better stop Stop playing with God. And my son was like, Ooh, who playing with God? Hey, my mama taught me this. Like, I, I'm dead serious, you know. And uh, that thing, when my husband told me that, it blessed my soul because it was God winking at me. He was saying, Hey, when I told you to minister to your son when he was calling you, it wasn't in vain. I knew what I was doing. You know what I mean? I, ne I needed you to remind him who he was, and I needed you to remind him who he belonged to. That's what I needed you to do so he can rededicate his life and repent because I see I saw what was coming and, and don't get it twisted. 
I can see what's coming. It's our choices. We make the decision. We choose. Mm -hmm. So we have the choice to change our mind and like, you know what? I'm not going to go right. I'm going to go left. Or you know what? I want to go right. I'm going right. And the Lord like, uh, I, was, I, I know what's to the right. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for preparing me ahead of time. Like, hey, 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 minister to your son. Mm. Minister to your son. And I remember, you know, I have to say this. I remember telling my husband, Holy Spirit told me my he's not gonna be here too much longer. And my my husband rebuked me. <laughs> he rebuked me. It was him and his best friend. And, and it's so amazing how God always gives me a witness. When my son was in the hospital fighting for his my husband's best friend was crying. He said, Oh my God, Tanya, you 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 were you were trying to tell us what was about to happen and we didn't believe you and, and my husband was like ah. and because you know everybody starts thinking about the regrets mm -hmm. everybody starts thinking, well i should have could have would have and i had to tell mm -hmm. them i said guess what i said that was just the holy spirit preparing us mm -hmm. I, he was preparing me and i was just trying to relay the message so he could re prepare you. but there was nothing that we could have done people we make our own choices. And my son was 19 years old. At that point, he, he was held accountable. I was no longer held accountable for him. So all I can be held accountable for is that God told me to speak out of my mouth. Now, had I not listened to God and conversated with him and talked to him like the Lord told me to do, then I probably would have been around here crazy. Mm. Because mm. I would have felt like, oh, my God, I, I missed it. He hell and all, and so no. The Lord gave me peace when that young lady said that, and it, it, it made me know. Okay, God, thank you. You so good. You just wanted me to know He made it in. You did not want me to be thinking about that and me being in bondage with it. That oh, did my son get get in the heaven? Because see, one thing about it, the enemy, he he likes to play games with you, and he'll keep talking to you. He he mm. wants us to be crazy. Yeah. He wants us to not function. Yeah. Yep. Tanya, you know, you have said something so important. And on this podcast, um, we like to speak the truth about God because That's right. so often he gets a bad rap, right? He gets blamed for things that he didn't do. And right. because he is sovereign, but he doesn't use his sovereignty to control us. And so... I know I have been asked, but, you know, why does God let bad things happen? And so you're the mom. And as a mom, you're sharing, like, this was hard for me. But I have to understand that we have free will. Yeah. Listen, I, I just did a video uh, the other day, and I was talking about you know, I'd rather live this life, believe in God, believe in everything the word says, believe that the Bible is real and, and leave this place, place and be like, oh, OK, well, then to live this life, not believing anything, choosing the entire world over anything over God, denying God, denying Jesus, die. And it's true. And I'm in hell. Why not just live your life right? Why not just live your life believing God and walking, walking right? What's what's wrong with it? What what's we 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 think we're missing something so bad? We have the choice to choose life. What what does the Bible say? Choose life. Yes. I don't know why people think being a Christian or or believing in God that you don't have fun. <laughs> Where do you think we get our fun from? And sense the humor and just we have God. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But you know, in your testimony, you see God's faithfulness. When you're, you you poured into your son, that seed was there. And when, you know, God put on your heart to minister to him, to have him come back, right? You did that. And then God showing his faithfulness to you and to your son. Yeah. Because he's good. Uh -huh. In spite of in spite of us, good That's is right. his nature. Love is his and nature. And I'm gonna say 
he lived three weeks too. I, I, a lot of people, he didn't die instantly either. I want to say something to you guys. God loves us so much that I believe our angels, they camp around us to and from. I know, you know, as believers, we speak our angels of protections down, down on us, but we cover our kids and we pray for our kids. And let me tell you something. No prayer is ever void. You know how, you know, hey, I prayed this four or five weeks ago. The Lord, he heard you. That prayer still is in an effect. And when I pray for covering of my son and protection, when my son was shot a total of six times, five bullets hit him and stayed in, right? He was not hit anywhere that he died to where he had, he died instantly. He was able to live three weeks conscious, you know, communicate with me, talk to the people that visited my, my church, my husband, me, my pet, like he was able to see how many people loved him and and how many people cared for him. And I don't know, I don't remember, but people ask me, do you, I wonder, does, did he know he was going to die? I said, you know, I don't know if he knew how serious and bad, I know he knows it was serious. I don't know if he thought he was going to die, whatever the case may be. But what I do know is, I know that the love that we showed my son, the peace and that we, we gave him on his deathbed, it was easier than him dying. Alive. Mm. Cause, mm. Because he could have died silly and, and, and none of us would have been able to love on him or he could have died been a John Doe and nobody knew. And and, and one day I, we just got a phone call and he just died in the hospital by himself. God bless him too. He was able to see his entire family. Mm. He was able to love on his entire family. My son was able to kiss me in my mouth before he left this earth. And I told him, I said, I love you so much. You know, it's it just, it's crazy because God gave that to me and he gave it to my son too. No matter what, what, we're, we're human. We're human. And the pain is always going to be there. But like Sylvia said, one thing about it and two things for sure is our choice. How we're going to live this life. And I just accept and know it. And I know God's word is, is forever changing. It's alive. It, it's not going to be false. And he said what he said. Yeah. Choose life or choose death. Hmm. You know, Tanya, I, uh, my cousin, uh, lost his son several years ago and, uh, and he was a believer and, you know, he said something at the funeral that was so profound to me and I will never forget it. And he stood up at the funeral and he gave the eulogy for his son and he said, some of y'all are going to struggle with what I'm about to say. He said, because you can't fathom how someone can have so much peace when they have lost their child. And he said, however, he said, this situation has brought me closer to God. Right. Because now I know what it feels like to lose a son. Hmm. And I sat there and I thought about it and I was like, wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just to 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 look at God and be able to say, God, I know now. I know, I know what you must have felt like, you know, when when Jesus gave his life for all of us, you know? And so, you know, you, you've mentioned it. Did you get closer to God after this? Almost definitely. Listen, you better, you better get close to God. Listen, it's, it's perversion to have to bury a, a child. That's mm. perversion. That is not the way God intended. Mm -mm. Hey, man, that thing will make you go all the way back to Adam and Eve with Cain and Abel. You know what I mean? It's like since the beginning of time, the devil had that perversion on this earth. Like we are in a fallen world, but guess what? We are in it. Mm. And we got to know how to deal with it. You know what I mean? 
And yeah. it's like, you better get close to God. Because it, it was times I was sitting down like, I, you know what? I, I don't want to be here. This mm. place right here is just wicked. Mm. And I was like, I can't believe my son got killed. And it's like, again, like I told you, you have to think. Bring that word back. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Hey, <laughs> you reap what you sow. You, you do. And uh, you are going to have consequences when you are not doing what this word in this book right here is telling you to do. Mm. Because it was an accident because I found out later my son wasn't even the target. Them men came to shoot up the trap house and my son just happened to be standing outside in front of his truck in it. Because mm. you shortened your days and the enemy plot, he, he found he found some somebody that had that in their heart, and you just happened to be the one for that day. Because you weren't doing what you were supposed to be doing. You were at a place that you weren't supposed to be at. Mm. And he got you. Mm. But even though he got you, you still won. Mm. You, he just took you the glory quicker. And believers, we have to think about that. Don't be scared of death. For you or your loved one that's saved. Because we're all going to go to place. But guess what? We in glory. Yeah. Tanya, you know, obviously you've, 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 you've come to peace, right? To uh, a great extent, obviously, with, with what's happened. You're now out, you know, sharing this story. You're impacting so many lives. And you're going to impact so many lives for the kingdom of God with your testimony and with your story. Um, I personally know a few people that have lost their sons um, unexpectedly and they're still struggling with finding peace, right? Yeah. Like they're just, they're still struggling with finding peace. What would, what would you say to those moms out there right now that have lost their child, that are struggling still with, 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 with moving, going on with their lives and are struggling to find that peace, the peace that the, that the Bible talks about is unsurpassable, right? That yeah. peace that's unsurpassable. You know, what would you say to them? Coming from a mom who lost her son unexpectedly, what would you say to them? Well, I first want to say this. You're still alive. You're still there. And it's somebody here that needs you. You know, everything that we do is for somebody else. Everything that we go through is for somebody else. We are supposed to love everybody the way we love ourselves. And when we experience a loss, we're supposed to grieve and we're supposed to mourn, but then we're supposed to keep living and we're supposed to help somebody else. Either that has gone through the same thing or somebody that just needs comfort, that needs to, to, to know why am I still alive on this earth? And the reason is, is because you have a destiny. It's something that you're meant to do here. And you need to figure out what that thing is and you need to focus on that because what we can't do is we can't idolize a thing that's a person a place a thing money people children husbands we can't do it mm -hmm. god is the god that we are to worship mm -hmm. and that we are to live for not man even if it's our son even if it's our daughter even if it's our husband, we have to pray about these things and for real, give it to God. Mm. Because the Holy Spirit's power is on the inside of us. So we need to pray and heal ourselves because we have the power on the inside of us. Don't be powerless. That's mm. another deceit from the devil to keep you bound in grief so mm. you can stop living. Amen. Amen. 
Anya, you, uh, I want to share with everyone watching or listening. You have, you have so many testimonies of how God has shown you who he is, his love, oh. his faithfulness, his goodness, that he's a good father. Um, you have been putting a lot of content out on social media and you know, I see it, I, I've commented, but I've also read the comments uh, they're getting of people just saying, thank you. Thank you, because I've been going through something like this, or I've been going right. through something like that, or, you know, my heart was broken, or, you know, just, and yeah. um, so first, I want to thank you for putting that content out, because as Steve said, you know, he gives us, right? The Lord gives us something to steward. And it's our job to steward it well. And one of the things that we all have is a testimony. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. um, the scripture that we stand on for um, our, our coaching program and our podcast is Revelations 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of of their testimony mm. and yeah. so i need anyone out there listening watching this tanya where can they go to catch you on social media you know what else are you doing because you you are a leader in your community you're a leader in your church mm. you're a minister you're a speaker so international speaker, international speaker. <laughs> that's right that's right so where can our listeners go to reach out to you, to follow you, to just, you know, keep in contact with you? Yeah, well, all of my platforms is I am Tanya Chen. You know, um, when I get off this interview, I'm going to do my post for the day. You know, so I'm definitely uh, on all of the social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. And I'm just, listen, like, Sylvia said, we graduated in May from Karis Bible College, and a lot of people have been waiting for mm -hmm. me to finish because I've been told for so long to do, you know, post my uh, testimonies because mm -hmm. a lot of people have heard them when I minister or teach or different things like that. And I just wanted to wait. I wanted to get finished because I know this is something that I believe God called me to do My because I'm transparent. I I am not ashamed of anything that I've gone through. I feel like I'm a battleship. I feel like the Lord built me to this. Like, you knock me down, I'm just going to roll right back up. You understand? And in my life, it's so hard to believe, but I'm from the age of two, and I'm 48 years old right now. I can tell you things, traumatic things that happened to me that of course you see i'm still here and god just i look back i was like yeah you were always there you know i can't mm -hmm. i can't look at those things and just see neck i can't because yeah. if i was hungry some kind of way you fed me if i didn't have any clothes some kind of way you got somebody to give me some it's like my testimonies can you can clearly see that God was in it because he knew who he created me to be. And he knew I was going to tell it and I was going to tell it how it is. That's and right. he knew that when I gave my life to him, I was going to be for real about it. Mm -hmm. And so did the devil. And that's why he's been after you so hard for so, so long, long. I tell everybody, because I say, he man, knows I say, my guts. I say that devil cannot stand me. I feel and the same the Lord, way. He had me in, in his camp. He, he tried to do me in, and the Lord was like, nope, I built her a certain, that one you're not going to be able to have. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I am so excited that you are on the same team that I'm on. Okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm just letting you know, I'm so excited that you're on it because you are a powerhouse, and you are a battleship. And I can't wait for your book to come out. And I know the enemy trying to talk you out of doing that book, but <laughs> it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> Listen. That book's going to impact, change lives. Everybody, y'all listening, keep an ear out, keep an eye out for Tanya Chin's book that will be coming out in the near future. It's going to be called The Battleship. 
All right. Yeah. All right. And and, and I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna tell you something right now. That book is gonna impact and change lives. But anyways, we, I'm gonna get off that soapbox. But I'm speaking that over you because I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I know, I know what 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 writing books will do for uh for getting that testimony out to the masses. Right. What's next? What's next though? For you, because Sylvia mentioned it, Revelation 12, 11, they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of the testimony. You're out sharing this testimony. You're doing it publicly on social media now. Uh, you've got your uh, minister's license. Uh, what's what, what what's God showing you uh, as far as what's next for Tanya? Because I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be a world changer for the kingdom. And I know Sylvia feels that way too. We've talked about it on numerous times uh, leading up to this interview. But what's next? What do you think? Well, you know, I just speaking, just opening up my mouth. Hey, I was told a long time ago by a pastor that when I speak, I shake hell. I receive mm. that thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Because um, I didn't go through everything I went through in vain. I didn't. And I know. I didn't just go through it just to go through it. I know that a real testimony is when you've gone through something and you've conquered that thing. Not that you go through something and you're still going through it. So what kind of help are you going to be to anybody else? They need to see where you're at now. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it started with me being so young to where now I can speak on it. So I'm definitely focused with my social media Um platform i'm definitely open for whenever i'm asked to speak anywhere you know and i and god leads me to do so um i'm just not afraid i have no fear in me and i'm i'm just, i'm open i don't i don't uh what's the word i want to say i i don't shelter my testimony i yeah. tell all of it and right. i tell you the good the bad and the ugly but i also let you know god got me through it Mm. And I also let you know how you better be doing and living your life to get where I'm at. Amen. So mm. it's just me. Mm. I'm free. I'm free on every mm -hmm. aspect. So when I'm asked to speak, that'll be what it is. Well, I foresee a whole lot of speaking opportunities coming your way very, very soon. I know that ultimately uh, we're going to have you back on this show again because there's so much that we could sit here and riff about all day long, right? Uh, right. I know, I know Sylvia, Sylvia always gets um, a scripture that's given to her uh, for, for our guests. And did you get one, Sylvia? Did you get one for, for Tanya? Okay. All right. <laughs> Tanya, before, before I share the scripture, like Steve said, I always, um, I always, you know, I'm in prayer before the, the episode and before we, we meet with the person. And uh, and I ask the Lord to give me a, a word, give me a scripture to share with the guest. But before I share that, I want to tell you that um, I love you so much. Mm. I feel so blessed that, um, you know, we ended up at Karis Bible College together that, you know, um, especially in our second year, we came together, we did our mission, you know, we went on our mission trip, we were oh, roomies yeah. in our, <laughs> we were roomies when we went, and, um, but you, you, just, you have blessed my life so much, and I thank you, I thank you for sharing everything that you've shared, um, and I thank you for just speaking with that authority, and that boldness and that courage that we know, you know, comes from having the, the power of the Holy Spirit within you. But I thank yeah. you for that because we need to snatch as many people mm. out of yeah. their, their, you know, they're lost. And we know the time is drawing near and we know that nothing aches our Lord's heart more than separation from him. Mm. So... Amen. I cannot wait to, to uh, continue to see what your what God is calling you to do, and you just walking in that obedience and that fire of the Lord. So, um, so I went to him and I and I asked him to press the scripture on my heart, and he gave me Psalm twenty seven thirteen, 
And as I hear this testimony that you shared today, and I remember all the other testimonies that you've shared, I think about how perfect this scripture is for you. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's it. That's it. Amen. That's it. Mm. That goodness and that glory, right, Tanya? And, you know, I, I know you can speak on this. Um, it's not for when we get to heaven. It's for us to grab hold of and walk in it here on earth. And uh, I see that. I, I see that. That, that he That's has supernatural us. joy. Amen. 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 Wow. So much there in that scripture, huh? Yes, that was good. So. So Tanya Chin, uh, Facebook, Instagram, no, I am Tanya. Yeah, so if I am Tanya Chin, yes, on mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, I think TikTok is Tanya Chin, um, YouTube Tanya Chin, and like I said, I'm just I'm just gonna post what what I pray about it every day, and mm -hmm. it'll, and you see Sylvia, I'll just like, hey, yeah. let me talk to you real quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, your videos are powerful too absolutely powerful so definitely everybody needs to go follow you for sure yep so Tanya, do you think you can close this out in a prayer oh yes for sure okay father god i just want to thank you for this meeting lord i thank you for sylvia and steve and this platform lord please continue to bless them and keep them prosperous in all that they're doing let them reach the world with the testimonies of the people that they bring on their show father god Lord, we thank you so much just for everything. We just come in with thanksgiving, God. Um, I do know that you are here with us at all times, and we just ask you to continue to guide our steps, Lord, and direct our paths, Father, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, everybody, we want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of Kingdom Influencers Saved by Grace. Tanya Chin is definitely a kingdom influencer go follow her go connect with her and we love you guys and we'll see you on the next show